They have to do something better about the killing, about the, the guns on the street. Erica Davis has called Patterson home for over 10 years, but she says the continued gun violence in the city has her worried about her safety. So she's moving to Texas next month. It's crazy. It's just um, nowadays, um, for the past two weeks, last month with the girl getting shot, another girl getting shot last week, it's, it's just... Shocking. Patterson saw its 28th homicide in 2021 after a woman was shot and killed last week. It's the second year in a row the city has set a record in homicides. There were 27 people killed in 2020, the highest number in the city since 2014. Our country is experiencing such a volatile and violent time. Mayor Andre Seya expressing his concerns for the ongoing violence in the city. He says like many other major cities dealing with the trauma of the pandemic, Patterson is also seeing its share of shootings. But the city is doing everything it can to reduce it. We have a special operations that is underway and we've been able to seize over 200 guns. Now next week we will be hiring 25 new police officers. I'll be swearing them in and we're also going to announce next week that we have a new academy class that will be starting in January and that's 31 police officers. Using data using evidence-based policing, using the ceasefire model, and using the street crime unit with all of our units at narcotics and the rest combined. When I have those boots on the ground, 40% reduction, we will be in the area of 439 police officers, which is gonna be the highest in a decade since the layoffs. Patterson isn't the only city in New Jersey facing challenges when it comes to gun violence. There have been 54 murders in Newark this year. That's one more than the city saw in all of 2020. Most of them the result of fatal shootings. The, the uh, legal sales of guns in this country exploded everywhere uh, in March of 2020 and that has not receded. This year we've recovered dozens of ghost guns uh, which are uh, firearms that you can buy over the internet in kits and then assemble them once you receive it in the mail. They don't have serial numbers. They're not traceable. Uh, so while we've recovered the, you know, over three dozen here now, God only knows how many are being used in crimes in the city that we're just not aware of yet. Last year was a record breaking year for gun violence, uh, gun deaths. And we knew we'd be right here at the door of breaking that record uh, six months ago because the increase in gun violence, I think it was a nine or 10% increase in the first six months of 2021, which signaled that we were looking to be right on the door of breaking that number from last year, which was around 44,000 um, gun deaths to include suicides. And so this year we're right at the door of almost 42,000 with um, the better part of December to go. There have been almost 800 shootings in the state since April 15th. 182 people have lost their lives. Community advocates maintain more resources need to be invested in communities plagued by violence. We're seeing a lot of our young people are struggling with housing. They're struggling with IDs. They're struggling with jobs. They're struggling with um, educational resources. There's so much um, hurt from the pandemic too, right? If you train residents, you know, as public safety professionals in conflict resolution, mediation, and de-escalation strategies through a, through a trauma-informed lens, uh, lens, through the public health model, um, meaning that you equip those who are closest in proximity, you know, to the violence with the skills, the tools, and the resources to do the intervention, the prevention, and the treatment, you're going to have an impact. The Office of the Attorney General agrees. A spokesperson issuing a statement saying in part, we cannot end gun violence unless we invest in the people working on the ground to make their community safer. That's why we are leading efforts on multiple fronts to ensure the safety of our communities. We are tackling this public health crisis with a three-pronged approach that includes treating the root causes of violence, keeping dangerous weapons away from those most likely to harm others, and taking swift action against those who break the law. Advocates say they recognize law enforcement can't stop gun violence, but they're hopeful with the right resources, they'll be able to work together to keep communities safe. For NJ Spotlight News, I'm Melissa Rose Cooper.